first, just to put some context, so I just want to explain a bit about my personal DNA. Uh, I'm an internet entrepreneur. I've been building companies for the past 15 years. Three of them were in Boston, and I sold my last one, then bought it back, then moved to the region, moved to Lebanon. Um, and so, so this is kind of my DNA. I'm an internet entrepreneur. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very hands-on. I, I build and quickly adapt around things. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, I want to first compare how innovation used to happen, how it's happened, how it's happening right now. Innovation in the past, people used to put five years plans, five year projection plans, and start building and investing money until you know, trying to reach those and, any, and anything that would change from that would completely mess up the plan, mess up all the money that has been invested in that. And that's what th things like infrastructure, telecom, uh, telcos, and sometimes banks happen. You used to have a lot of people in neckties and suits, uh, no offense to anyone, but usually going to the banks, go governments, and figuring out how things used to happen in, in the days of ITU uh, and, and all of that, and uh, to be able to build and come back and really put an infrastructure. And then internet came, and it changed those of the games. Anyone now can innovate, can just with a learning code and, 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 and really a common sense of business, go online and start building companies. Uh, so, that, so now it was more about adaptation. Does anyone know how PayPal started? It did not start at all as a payment. We have GM of PayPal here in the region. It, it started as a cryptography for phone. Over time, it adapted. It became a, a mobile payment, that it became a real payment. Flickr which is a sharing website. It started as a gaming website. And then over time, internally, the team said, let's share of, of the pictures internally so we can build games m much faster, realize, wow, there's more value in this in the actual game, and open it up. So why am I mentioning this? Because as investors, it's very important to learn this. And it's very important that we don't invest in balance sheets, but more in people. And yes, we need to look at the market and how the market decides the, uh, the, the size of the, of the space the company is going into. But more importantly is the, 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 the team and the ability to adapt and execute and really be very agile uh, to, the, to the factors. You know, it's much more important to have a compass than a map. A map costs a lot of money. A compass, you can nav navigate the, the, the difficulties much faster. So a region, what, what, what do we care about this in the region? The region has great fundamentals. Um, we have internet penetration, about 110 million users. Uh, mobile penetration is very high. E-commerce. Uh, you know, Wanda did a research with, with PayPal, and we, we found out that it was $9 billion this year, expected $15 billion by 2015. Um, and a lot of really interesting uh, uh, mechanics happening, the youth and everything. So that's a huge opportunity, right? So, um, but there's a problem. The problem is that the ecosystem hasn't yet built up to the, to the, to the place where it can actually build and give back and, and build those $100 million, $500 million companies that we heard from, from Ari. So what does Wanda do? Uh, we define ourselves as an ecosystem builder, as a platform VC. So we took five steps. The first step we did was we built a media arm. Why media? Because we wanted to break the stigma. We want to break the, the, fail, the fe fear of failure. We wanted to change the culture. Now we have about 30 journalists writing stories all across the Arab world. Number two, you said we want to anchor the community. We want to anchor this, ha this activity that's happening through events and through programs. And we built a program called Mix and Mentor that has operated in more than 15 cities impacted about 1,000 entrepreneurs, and built connections between investors and entrepreneurs, really hands-on and really matching people, uh, entrepreneurs and mentors in a very interesting format. Uh, so that's number two. The third thing we, we did is we invested. So as we were building the ecosystem, we were investing in it. With our sister fund, Wanda Capital and Mina Ventures, we deployed about $20 million in about 70 companies. Uh, and we already have two exits, actually one exit, another one big com one coming on the way. But really, we learn a lot of what's happening in the region, the space to go in, the space not to go in, and how to push companies to the next level. And we take a very much hands-on approach. To, so myself uh, uh, and the chairman of FOM, the Fadi Ghandour, founder of Aramex, are entrepreneurs investing in entrepreneurs. So we really, really uh, we take that approach very, very uh, seriously in terms of being hands-on and actively engaged with entrepreneurs. Um, the, th the fourth thing we did is we actually started an advisory arm, and really the advisory arm was mostly to engage the private sector into giving back into uh, entrepreneurs. And that's a, a big problem. Today you have telcos, uh, banks, logistics companies, all of those are actually at fault at many of the Arab Spring that we talk about and any of the potential deadlocks of the, the, the economy in the Arab world. So if banks, um, besides investing, if they open up their value chain, if they work with startups, for them to, to give them solutions. Uh, if logistics companies like Aramex allow e-commerce to build on top of its value chain, this is something that's big, and it's something we're doing with, with Zain, with the Kuwait government and others, and helping them understanding more how to engage the entrepreneurs. 
The fifth and last thing we did, after we did all of that, we said, now we know what we're talking about, so let's come up with research and policy papers. And actually, it turns out that more than 70% of startups in the Arab world have one uh, goal to expand, it's to go to the GCC. Specifically, 27% Saudi, 24% um, uh, UAE, and the rest was Qatar. So really, I will look at it, talent comes from the Levant, but GCC, Saudi Arabia in particular, is a trophy for monetizing your startup. So that's something we really focus on in our new fund that we are, I'd like to announce today, a $75 million fund that invests in Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, and Dubai, focus on, regional, on a regional scalability. So really, at the end, I just want to conclude with one point. Um, I think well, what we're doing here is great today. One thing to really, really keep in mind is that um, it's great to put plans, uh, and it's great to, put, to, to, to have projections, but it's much more important to execute. So I think we need to be very fast and agile and be open to working together in the ecosystem. You know, we work a lot with MEVP, with Baytech, with everyone else. So we need here to also uh, put our words into action, and thank you. <laughs>